So earlier in the offseason, I gave y'all a lot of different trade ideas that the Bucks maybe should consider, some ones that they should avoid, some ones that might happen. You know, I gave y'all in multiple videos a lot of different examples of trades, but despite a couple of requests for me to do more of those videos, I've kind of wanted to stay away from it because at a certain point, it doesn't seem like these trades are going to happen, and I don't want to beat a dead horse. But with all that being said, Bleacher Report just dropped two new articles with potential trade targets this one we're going to look at first is a list of different teams and a player that they should be targeting and the next one is like five teams that they focused in on with big deals that they could use to improve them and so first we're going to look at the major trade target for the bucks and see if it makes any sense and if you couldn't tell with this man's face right here they're saying that the bucks should be targeting um they, they should target brandon clark and in a vacuum but Brandon Clark, I don't despise the idea. You know, he's probably a little bit better than Bobby uh, defensively. Probably a decent amount better defending the perimeter than Brooke Lopez. So if I would were to say there was one type of player the Bucks could use, I would say it's a defender that's more versatile than Brooke Lopez and just better overall than Bobby Portis, which I do think Brandon Clark provides. I just personally think there are better examples of this. And what they're saying the Bucs should be doing to go get him is that they should be moving off from Bobby Portis before he becomes a free agent to go and get Brandon Clark. And <coughs> I'm sorry. Compared to most hardcore Bucks fans, I'm probably one of the least pro Bobby Portis people. I'm not anti Bobby, but I'm just not somebody that thinks Bobby Portis is like the heart and soul of the Bucks. And like, I have a lot of criticisms of Bobby. But with all that being said, I'm sorry. We're not moving off of Bobby Portis for Brandon Clark. I would rather take a chance and see if we lose him in free agency and hold on to him for this playoff run than going and getting Brandon Clark, who, like I said, kind of fills a need, but he just doesn't do it at a high enough level. And ideally, I would be wanting to bring in that type of player, um, not for Bobby or Brooke, but for a guy that is more expendable. And they're talking about Chris Middleton here in the right. Like, what is the right situation where uh, the main target is Brandon Clark and you give up Chris Middleton? There's no situation where giving up Chris Middleton is even the right thing. These are just, man, I don't even know their hiring process over at Bleacher Report because there are sometimes, you know, people disrespect the Bucks and, you know, it's crazy and I react to it. And then there are some times where it's just like, I don't think you watch basketball that closely, even just throwing Chris Milton's name in there. But anyway, I just think that's ridiculous. Like if there were a way to say like maybe Pat Connaughton has a great first half of the season and he starts to shoot 40% from three and we can move off of him at a high point. And maybe we have to throw in one of those young guys that we aren't, uh, maybe we're not using at that point to match up the salaries. Okay. But Bobby Portis for Brandon Clark, no. Even mentioning a potential Chris Middleton in there uh, is just absolutely absurd. But now we'll move on to over here, um, the main trade target that they're saying the, saying the Bucks should pursue. And they're saying it's Cody Martin, and I disagree. I think they had it more right with that type of player in the first example in terms of a big man. But Cody Martin, honestly... It kind of adds to a problem, in my opinion, for the Bucks. And I know people are out on Pat Connaughton, but I'm not sure. I'm not positive Cody Martin is a massive upgrade. I mean, this isn't Caleb Martin. This guy's been playing on the Hornets where it's possible it's a situation where he's a diamond in the rough. He's been in a situation where he has no chance to flourish and he could go for the Bucks and have that Caleb Martin type of impact. But it's just not obvious that he can play winning basketball. We don't know that. And on top of that being a fact, uh, I just think that the Bucks actually have enough options in terms of this position right now. Going into the offseason before free agency, I would have said Cody Martin, perfect. That's the type of guy we need. But how tall is Cody Martin? Uh, let's look it up. Cody Martin height. I don't know if they mentioned it. I feel like he's like 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Height. If he's 6'8", I'll change my tune on this. But yeah, he's six foot six. So this isn't a guy you really want playing the forward position in the forward spot. And in terms of wings... I think, you know, the Bucks added Gary Trent Jr. They added DeLon Wright, who could definitely play the two next to Dame and probably a better defender and more reliable offensive player in a winning situation than uh, Cody Martin. And then there's Torian Prince as well. So a guy that could play like one, two, maybe three. I don't think there's a need for that, especially when you consider that there's young guys that I'm not saying all of them are going to be great, but 
probably one of these guys are going to need to be a part of the rotation. And probably one of these guys are going to be better than Cody Martin, whether it's AJ Green, whether it's Andre Jackson, whether it's Bochamp. I think the Bucks have done a good balance of filling in needs while also still leaving leaving room for one or two of those guys to step into the rotation. Bringing in Caleb Martin and Cody Martin and giving up another pick, unless some injury were to happen, God forbid, to like Gary Trent Jr. or something like that, I definitely don't think this is the number one need. The number one need is a versatile guy that can play the four or the five and defend fives, defend fours, defend the perimeter, defend the inside. I've given examples of those guys in previous videos. Those type of guys that I do think will be readily readily available at the trade deadline. Even a guy like a Rashawn Holmes who the Mavericks got for not very much at the trade deadline. Those types of guys seem to always be available. And I think those are the guys that the Bucks actually should be looking for, if anything, rather than like a two or three in Cody Martin. But let me know what y'all think. Drop a comment. Hit that like. Hit subscribe. Please. Yes, sir.